Hello there, I'm going to demonstrate how to assemble one of my travel neck bases using the David Gage neck off flight case. So, just take about 15 minutes. I hope you enjoy. The first thing we do is lay the case down. And there are three Velcro straps that we want to undo. Now at this point, we want to remove the neck case from the body case. And to do that, we just make a fist and hit it, and it'll slide up a couple inches. And then you lift off the case from the main trunk. Now imagine you would do this assembly in a hotel room on the road, or maybe at a stage. Uh, I'm going to assemble this on my bench, but you can use your bed as a, as a nice surface. Um, and we'll see in a minute why that's so important. I have a, a piece of carpet here on the floor that will protect the base when we stand it up. And then a piece of carpet on the bench to protect the body. But as I said, if you're in your hotel room, you can use the bed because it's, it's nice and cushiony and there's probably carpet on the floor so it won't scratch the base. So now we're going to take the neck out of the neck case. And there are these four latches. Something to note here is that when you load up the case into the trunk, the neck case, when you close these, you, this, this little lever should be in the up position. If, if you close it and then put it in the down position, it will not load correctly into the main trunk. So when you're latching things up, just tighten it up and then put it in the up position and you are ready to load. So that's just a minor detail. So go ahead and we're going to unpack the scroll and neck. There it is. So we've got four components of the system. You have a bridge, fixed bridge. You have the end pin. And you have what I call the neck assembly, which is the neck, the strings, the tailpiece, the C extension, if you have a C extension, it's all one assembly. So, you can get rid of the case and just set it aside. And we'll put this, we're going to call this the bed, put this on the bed. Um, the next thing we're going to do is unpack the body from the front. Again, these are just three latches. And we open it up. And here we have the body with a Messina bag. Uh, Messina makes a special travel uh, gig bag that is, has all the straps and pockets. It's a little bit uh, thinner. It's a fleece lined bag, but it keeps your weight down and it protects the instrument. And if you know how to you know, travel with a base, you don't need a really thick, heavy bag. This is a really nice bag and, and it fits well inside of the trunk. So to pick it out of the, the case, and the strap here, and you can just go ahead and grab the cloth that is the, uh, the neck area. You just lift it up out of the base, like that. Set it back on the ground. Inside the bag, in addition to the strap, is the T Allen wrench that you need to assemble the base. And it goes without saying is do not lose this T Allen wrench. Once you are finished using it, just put it back in the bag. It's a 3 16th size, you can get it at any hardware store, but uh, you don't want to leave it on a gig. So uh, it's a mental note, as soon as you're done using it, put it back in the bag. So we'll put it up here on the bed. If you're traveling with a bow, you can put the bow case in the bag. It will occasionally hit against the top. What's probably a better idea is that right here on the inside of the case are two pockets for your bow, German, French, whatever you play. So you can travel with that and then you can take it out of the case and once the base is assembled, you can put it 
in your normal pocket like you would with any base bag. Let's take the body out. And there it is, a base. Now, you can see there's no end pin, so this is a good pressure point to hold here. And also the other end, you just hold it like that. That's a very secure way to hold the body. And as I said, I've got a piece of carpet here. You can also just lay it down on a carpeted floor. And then you would stand it upright against the bed, and you've got everything in front of you to assemble the neck. And this is probably the most important part of the process is that once the base is up, do not let it go and turn your back and do something else. It's very easy for this to fall over, okay? So once the body is upright and against the bench, do not leave the base. Don't answer the phone, don't go to the bathroom, anything. If you do have to leave the base, just take a few minutes, a few seconds really, and lay it down, and then go, you know, do your errand. So anyway, we've got the body up, We've got it against the bed. Now we're going to Allen wrench. And here's our neck. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got these straps around the fingerboard, and I call this the tailpiece diaper. And this keeps the ball ends from scratching up the top, so it's all protected. And we're going to use gravity to assemble the neck. Now, if you can zoom in on this, on this neck, you see at the bottom of the neck joint, there's a little black line. And that is the hole, and this lines up with the aluminum, car, I call it a car, that's inside the channel. And that just, with gravity, it just goes right in there. Now, the bolt that will fasten the neck to that car is already inside the heel. It's called a captive hardware. So we just put our Allen wrench in there and tighten it up. And you get it to about there, about, you know, hand tight. You don't have to go crazy on it, just get it hand tight. Make sure that there's, you know, it's a good fit on both sides. Very easy, very foolproof. Now we're going to put the base up on the bed. So at this point, you want to be mindful that you still have this tailpiece dangling around. So what I like to do is grab the tailpiece. You can grab the fingerboard now, and then the back of the instrument with the left hand, and just pick it up, walk it around to your bed. Now at this point, obviously this is a base bench and I have a special cradle. If you were in your hotel room, and assembling the base, you, you wouldn't want to put this on a pillow. You actually want the pillow end of the bed to be up here. You want the scroll to hang off the end of the bed because you're going to be, you know, tuning up the base. And if there's a pillow there, it's going to get in the way. So just imagine that this is the bed and basically the edge of the bed is right about here and the, and the heel of the, of the bed, sorry, the heel of the instrument is, is hitting the bed. So. I'm just going to go ahead and put in the end pin, come down here. I like to bring the pin all the way out, so we're just dealing with the collar, the collet. Put the tailpiece wire around the end pin, and then it's just a friction fit. You just press it into place. You want to be sure that your, your screw is facing this way, so when you lay the base down, like every other base, the screw's on the right side. To get a real final fit, you can just do this. It's just a couple pounds, and you can, and you're done, it's a, it's a good fit. So now we're gonna put the bridge up. So as you can see on the top, there's a, a pretty obvious place as to where the bridge has been, some varnish has lifted up. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bridge down where it was. And then you want to check down here at the saddle, this is the saddle, that your tail wire is evenly spaced like that. It's, it's not like that or like that, that it's on top of the ebony 
and everything looks good. Because once you bring tension up, if this is over to the side, you're just going to dig into the top and you got to redo everything. So take a moment, check that, come back to the bridge. I like to put the tension on, I'm right handed, so I'll stand on the base side of the instrument and obviously I'm holding the bridge with my left hand. And I will just apply pressure with the thumb as an anchor. I'll lift up and, and I'm pulling up in the D string to it's in the D groove. Now up here at the nut, I can see, I can see that I've got to redo it because I'm in the wrong groove. It's not a big deal. So I'll come back to the bridge, I'll pop it off, come up here and just sort out the G, D, A, E, right? So no problem. Back to the bridge, lift it up in the D groove. Now at this point, I want to check the alignment of the bridge this way as well as that way. Now I'm going to do that with the other strings off tension. There's enough tension on the bridge with that one string that I can make this adjustment. I'm also going to come back here, triple check. This looks good. I know the nut looks good. And then I'm going to look here at the top and see that it's not kicked, you know, one way or the other. It's back on that, on that varnish line. Now the other, the other uh, bridge setting, is it sitting too far back and you see gaps on the top? Or is the bridge sitting too far forward and you see a gap here? You want to you sit the bridge so that it's just, I pull it back a little bit and then I bring it forward and that's perfectly seated. The bridge is cut in such a way that the front is convex, it's slightly round and the back is more or less flat. So the bridge, if you want to look this way, the bridge should be sitting right here at a 90 degree angle. It looks like the bridge is falling down, but in fact, this is how the bridge should look. It shouldn't be sitting, you know, like that, and obviously you see a gap. So you just want to bring it back and get it seated firm. Now you can put the rest of the strings on the bridge up to tension. So again, just pull up, the G, pull the A up into the A groove, and then finally the E into the E groove. The final check you can do to see if the bridge is positioned correctly, you know, left and right, is look right here. You see the G string and the E string, they had the same amount of ebony sticking out from left to right. If the bridge were in the wrong position, it would look like that. And you've got a lot of ebony over here and not much ebony here. So you just go ahead and knock the bridge back with your, with your, with your fist until that, this tolerance is the same on both sides. And finally, check the bridge one more time. Pull it back a little bit, you see the gap. Pull it forward, it's seated. Now we can take these straps off and just Velcro. And then down here, finally, the tailpiece diaper. There you go. It's a double base. Now, obviously, the, the tension isn't up to pitch, so you could have you know your smartphone here and and start tuning. When I pack up a base, I like to I like to turn the tuner. Um, well, it's I call this, this is a half turn, just like that, that's a half turn. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half turns to detune the base. Now I've already done that here, so I have to go the other way, I have to tighten it up. So I actually have to do 14 half turns, so one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This one is just seven, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, obviously, we don't know if it's perfectly in tune, but it gets you really close. 
and then you can have your digital tuner on your smartphone and you can check the pitch. Uh, be mindful that in tuning up any bass, the bridge will want to just walk forward this way. It doesn't want to scoot forward, but it wants to pivot forward. And if you start to see gaps back here at the foot, you know that the bridge is walked forward too far. So what you can do is put your thumb here and your fingers in the front, and you can pull, pull this way gently. You can pull until you start to see a little bit of a gap, and then just push it forward a little bit, and now you're seated square. So there's plenty of graphite in these string channels, and that makes moving the bridge very easy. It also makes tuning the strings up very easy. So that's it, and for packing up the bass, you pretty much do everything in reverse. You do your tailpiece diaper, you do your straps, detune, pop the bridge off, and then set it upright using gravity. Use your wrench, take it apart. Yeah, you just follow the video in reverse. So if you have any questions, you can reach me through my website. And thanks for watching.